That's me. Well, it's the current character I portray. The person I am trying to be. But is it really me? Or just another act of mine? I've played many roles in my life, but the one that felt most like myself was the athlete. Ever since I could remember, I pursued this dream until my body failed me and I lost myself. I fell into a depression. I began to hate the world and my place within it. So I took on a mask of a thug, became a criminal, led me to become an addict. Till that child I was felt forever lost. In my darkest of times, I found hope again as a musician. I became the first in my family to go to college, graduating with a music degree. But all these mistakes that I made in my past makes me feel like I don't deserve my accomplishments. I suffer from imposter syndrome. I interviewed different classmates of mine and found that we all have these feelings. They just manifest in different ways. Writers, directors, actors, production designers. We all have feelings of self-doubt. So, can you tell me what you know about imposter syndrome? It doesn't really happen in a vacuum, my version of imposter syndrome, I guess. But it would happen specifically when I compare myself to other people. And I'd been, like, doing... Uh, Adobe After Effects for like a month or something like that. And I was comparing myself to people who've been doing it for like three years. And so it wasn't really a fair comparison, but when your work is being shown right after theirs, it, there's no way you can't compare it, at least for me, so. I think the film industry breeds a lot of imposter syndrome in people because you need to be perfect and you need to be really good. And there's a lot of critics who don't see the amount of work that go into even bad films. Um, I think a big difference, at least with film specifically, is that I actually like care what my peers think about my work um, in film school, since we're so like close. And like I give a shit what they think about um, what I do. And so that's where a lot of the imposter stuff sort of or at least a lack of self-confidence shows up because when I see something on like Instagram and it's somebody's short film and it's like miles better than me I don't know that person so I don't really care if theirs is better I think like I'll think it's cool but I'm not comparing myself actively to what they're doing it's like a weird thing for me to say yeah I suffer from imposter syndrome because it almost feels like an egotistical thing to, for me to say like yes I have these problems I know I'm better than I say I am but I don't believe I am, if that makes sense. I really don't. I, I definitely feel very inferior to my peers and my siblings and, and, and to everybody, really. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why I like to act so confident is because on some level, psychologically, I think by me acting that way, it's telling myself that I am not as bad as I think I am. I'm always, I feel like, playing the part that will cause the least amount of conflict, despite the fact that I, I'm known for getting into conflict. That's my way of not having myself deal with conflict. I enjoy directing actors and everything, but I hate being a director, if you know what I mean, because I hate the thought that like the entire project relies solely on me. And even if it's somebody else's fault that like the project didn't turn out in this one area because somebody messed up, that's still on me. I, my dad worked in the housing market during the market crash in 2008. So that stress impacted my family, my parents' relationships, and then it kind of trickled down to like my brother and I and how we grew up. So like they didn't have confidence in themselves because of what was going on. And so that confidence wasn't nurtured in me until like later. I don't think, I don't think I started gaining confidence until my senior year of high school or like started like trusting myself at all. I, constantly overwork myself so I don't have to think about my problems, which is a horrible habit, don't do it. 
anybody who's watching, don't do that. <laughs> I don't think it really, I think it helps my imposter syndrome. I don't think so much when I was in high school, I hated it, it made me depressed. But I think now, since I'm working collaboratively with other people, it actually kind of helps me because I'm invested in these projects that like I really enjoy and I'm spending time with people that I really enjoy. So like now, like, and I also like my job. It's something that like, it's in the field that I'm hoping to go into after I'm done with college. So it doesn't, it kind of is like, oh, you know, like I'm being validated and I'm learning things and like I'm spending time with people I enjoy. I've had um, like an internship before, but I never felt, <laughs> I never felt any, uh, any imposter syndrome working at Dunkin' Donuts or anything like that. Um, but uh, I was sort of, I was kind of handpicked for the job I've got now, um, which I've, I've never had happen. It was like, I got an email, like out of, out of the blue that was like, hi, I'm working on a project. I want you specifically to, to be my, to, to mentor. Um, and it was like, it was very flattering. It was like, it was like, wow, I didn't realize I made an impression at all. And then the job, um, and I, as I got more into the job, I think I sort of like continued that experience of being like told I'm good at something I don't like <laughs> at all. Um, and like, I'm like, you know, struggling through. Um, and I, I guess the imposter syndrome of it comes from this feeling of like, you know, I was picked for this. I was told I'd be good at this, you know. Uh, and if I'm not good at this, if it's clear I'm not enjoying this, then it's like I've, you know, like she, like she, she picked the wrong person or I'm. So it's the fake it till you make it kind of thing. I've, I'm a strong believer in that, yes. I'm a strong believer in a, in a fake it till you make it approach, yeah. See, um, that's a big part of this documentary is like how imposter syndrome can actually affect a person's depression um, if they're already struggling with depression or anxiety. That, that statement, if they're faking it, then they're, and they're logically knowing that they're faking it, right. actually is giving them more depression and yep. more anxiety yep. until they break. I think it's kind of true, but at the same time, if you don't believe in yourself, then you can't really, it's really hard to fake it. Like, you have to have a little belief in yourself in order to be like, yeah, I might be able to do it, and you can only fake it to a certain point. Rationalizing the thought of imposter syndrome and accepting that you have imposter syndrome for some people is actually their imposter syndrome. By them admitting they have it is them admitting that they are better than they think they are. Um, yeah, I, um, I definitely have my struggles with mental health. I, I feel like every couple of years I have a pretty massive collapse. I feel like last semester was just one long sustained collapse. Um, but on the whole, I, it's not, you know, it's like, I think it hits these points where it gets me really, really hard. Um, but even when things like that are happening to me, I'm still able to recognize to myself that I, at, at some point, I'm not gonna feel like this because I've been through it before. So I know that at some point, uh, I'll round that corner again. It was me accepting who I was as a person allowed me to get over that personal part of imposter syndrome me accepting myself as a past drug addict, as a past low life, as a past criminal. Now that I've accepted those things, now it's hard for me to accept the fact that I may belong in the same space as these people who weren't, who did everything right in life and now they're in college and now they're actually succeeding. As someone who was a criminal and had all this like bad things in my past that I feel like I don't deserve to be around these people because of those things. 90% of the time you're better than you think you are. It's probably my advice. Doubt's healthy doubt. There's not a lot of doubt that is healthy. It's like, it's like a spice. Doubt's like a spice. Like a little bit's good, but if you pour the whole bottle in it ruins the food, so. Unless that's your taste, then like, go ahead. <laughs> but like, 90% of the time, probably gonna ruin it. I think being creative is like a really stressful, difficult thing that's full of self-doubt. Um, but I don't know, because I was thinking about how imposter syndrome 
feels like it must be external, right? Other people have like expectations or there are external expectations. Like, I don't know, people with imposter syndrome must be people who have people who believe in them, you know, like they've had, they're people who have been given high expectations to meet. But like, I recently, I feel like I've been around people who, I don't know, I don't want to say they don't believe in me, but I have this sense that they're unimpressed by me. Um, and it, a lot of, you know, it gives me this fire. I'm like, you know, like, fuck you. I want to, I want to show you I'm great and stop being so, you know, like, it, you know, it makes me want to prove something. So regardless if I make it or not, I'm going to try my best to make it. And I'm going to try my best to like go through with it. And even if I don't think I'm good enough, or even if I make a bunch of garbage, I will still have at least made things. And I think that's the most important part. And that's what I've kind of figured out is that even if you aren't necessarily good enough, even if you can't do it for a living, you have to at least try and you have to at least make something. Imposter syndrome is how I treat myself. I treat myself like I don't belong. But I found out I wasn't alone. There are others who are impacted by this self-doubt. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. Staring directly at it can blind you. Take it from someone who faked it till they broke. That light is the person you can become. And you don't have to act like you're not that person. Instead, let that light guide you to become that person that you want to become. Make or break.